guy's sort of credo on it was was about I'm making something entertaining. You know, British films are boring. Social commentary, boring films that nobody ever watches. I want to make something that's entertaining. That with a few more expletives. And and you know and and that's that's what he was set out to do, and that's what he was doing. We thought we were making a great film. It was only when it had finished. And it had, having starred in this amazing movie, had zero impact on my career and my agent. And I thought, nobody believes this film's going to do anything. What's wrong with them? And uh, so I knew that it was going to be great. It's just there was zero anticipation attached to it because nobody from the British film industry per se was attached to it. Nobody had any... Um, Nobody had any skin in the game, you know. So, so when the film came out, that was the, the stumbling block, was as long as people see it, it was going to be a huge hit. It, it was so transparent to me, the people that were criticising the film genuinely didn't understand it. You know, the people from the British film industry saying, oh, well, it's a fad, or oh, well, it's just, you know, they pay for publicity, or this, you know. That obviously, it's, an, it's, an ex it's a lesson in filmmaking, Lockstock. It's a... It's not a gangster film, it's a caper movie that happens to be set in the backdrop of these sort of minor get-rich-quick criminals, that's all, from different walks. And, and, and that is timeless, you know, and there's nothing that, to stop it from being just as relevant in 50 years' time, not just 15, you know. They didn't have the money to spend, you know. I got paid, I was in it every week, so I got paid a little bit more because I got a weekly fee you know, of a few hundred quid. And at the time I was signing on, you know, and doing, scratching about trying to get episodes of The Bill and, and, and Casualty, and, and I'd done a couple of commercials, you know. I was, so I, it was, I was perfectly happy. I don't think you should do jobs for money unless they're money jobs. So I was signing on. I had an overdraft with uh, a certain house, a high street bank that, uh, that was a joint account with an ex-girlfriend and she'd gone off to India to find herself. So I was like, I couldn't, and I didn't have any money to pay this overdraft off it. So I'm like, going, great, her and her mum are finding it. I took to the bank manager and go, we need Miss Blah Blah to sign this so you can extend the overdraft. Well, I can't, unless, you know, she's in India. I don't know what she's doing. She's wandering around barefoot in some temple. I don't know what I did. Well, then this small debt sort of piled into a great big pile of money. And the guy, if I can be candid, the guy was taking the piss. I phoned, I spoke to the banking ombudsman. I wrote this, like, very sort of legal, um, astute letter saying this, this is like tantamount to blackmail. So they reduced the, ba the, the balance to whatever it was, back to what it was. I managed to sort of clear that. And then I found myself with these ridiculous CCJs. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get a bank account anywhere. I couldn't do it. I couldn't, you know, couldn't get a store card. I barely get a card at Blockbusters. It was like, every time you type my name in, sort of flames came out of the monitor. Like, this was going, went on for, you know, a year or two. And then, like I said, a lock stock came in. I got no bank account. I can't pay the money into anything. But every bank told me, you know, to leave. So my mum had an account, uh, with a, a well-known building society. So I was just paying it into that and signing checks, Maureen. I was like, well, this is ridiculous, you know. I went to see them and they were like, the, well, what we'll do, we'll give you a joint account so you can have your name on it and we'll give you a 50 pound check guarantee card. Oh, okay, thanks, that's a start. Then, then I, uh, you know, so then I did the Barclays adverts and they came after me with an enormous fee. I mean, like buy a house money, Tony Scott's directing it. You know, uh, it was huge. RSA, Ridley's producing it, Tony Scott's directing it, massive. And I said, yeah, okay. first of all, I said, no, I don't do adverts. And, you know, my agent said, you do, you're doing this. Because really simple, if you don't do it, this is their list, right? It goes, Jude, Ewan, right now, any other day of the week, it'd be the other way around. But right now, if you don't do it, they'll do it. So, all right, okay. Went to see Tony Scott, who's the, God rest his soul, was the nicest man you could ever meet. What a gentleman. And he had to pitch it to me. Oh, this advert's going to be great. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. But I can't wait to work with it. Have you seen I, I did a film called uh, True Romance. Have you seen that? F***ing great. Great film. I'm, I'm like talking to, to Tony Scott. He's trying to talk me into doing this advert. I mean, more of my head was at the time. And I came out and, of course, I'll do your advert, you know. And, uh, and uh, it was with Barclays, and one of the prerequisites, right, I want the best bank account you've got, I want no questions asked, and I want the CCJ lifted. And that's the only way that I got a bank account, was because, was because I did an advert for them. I couldn't be parading around with a check card that said Maureen when I'm doing a you know, multi-million pound Barclays advert for Tony Scott. And this is my Maureen account, you know, so God bless her. So yeah, that's what mums are for, though.